Hey everyone, welcome to the Neuron. I'm Corey Knowles. Uh, we're still live at AWS reInvent Las Vegas 2025. And today I'm sitting here with Stefano Armand, founder and CEO of Inception Labs. How are you doing, Stefano? Very well, thank you for having me. Good, it's great to have you, man. It's great to have you. Um, I guess for maybe our readers that don't know, can you tell us a little bit about Inception and, and what you guys are doing over there? Of course. So at Inception, we're building a new kind of LLM that is based on diffusion. So as you know, everybody's building a large language models. Uh, and the interesting thing is that everybody is building the same kind of like idea. Everybody's building a so-called autoregressive model, mm -hmm. uh, which essentially works by generating uh, text or code, uh, one token at a time. Yeah, and that's pretty slow. It's very hard to accelerate through parallel compute. And uh, so what we're doing at Inception is we're building a completely different kind of LLM that is based on a diffusion model. Mm -hmm. And you might have seen models that can generate images, mm -hmm. video. Yeah. Uh, I've between, played with stable, stable diffusion, uh, stable diffusion and some of the others, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, those models, they don't generate an image one pixel at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, they generate generate it through a so-called diffusion process, okay. which basically works by starting from pure noise, and then they refine it uh, using a neural network until at the end that you get this nice pretty picture yeah. that, that you want. And what we've done is we've taken that idea and figured out how to apply it to the text and code generation uh, by building a diffusion language model, where instead of generating an answer one word at a time, we start with noise, we start with a guess. Yeah. Basically, random words think yeah. of it that way, and then we gradually refine it until we get the the correct. Is the it's like yeah. playing Wordle. Yes, something. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I could see where that could could be a useful approach. Like I played with Stable Diffusion, Sora, of course. I believe Flux is a diffusion yeah. model yeah. as well. Of course. Um, tell me about the decision to go that route instead of traditional text direction. Yeah. So uh, in my lab at Stanford back in 2019, uh, we basically uh, invented this idea using a diffusion, a diffusion model. Okay. So back then, everybody was using a GAN, a generative adversarial network, if you remember in 2019. Yeah. Uh, and we came up with this alternative approach that is based on a iterative refinement. Okay. Which is now known as a diffusion model. And since then, I've been trying to get diffusion models to work on text and code on discrete kind of objects uh -huh. uh, because diffusion models are, are so much faster. Yeah. Uh, diffusion models can generate things instantly. And I really wanted to be able to get that kind of uh, uh, speed there for language and, and code generation. So I've been working on that idea in my lab at Stanford for several years. Um, we published a paper last year, mm -hmm. uh, basically showing that for the first time, a uh, diffusion language model was competitive with a small autoregressive model, like a GPT-2 model. So a, a yeah. tiny little model, but for the first time, it was basically matching the quality and it was like 10x faster. Wow. And so I took that idea and then I started a company, an uh, inception to basically scale up and you since trained much larger models, more capable models with better training data. Uh -huh. uh, and now we've released the, the, the first commercial scale diffusion language model, Mercury. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what we've been able to achieve is a model that is 10x faster compared to autoregressive models like Gemini Flash or Haiku or Mini or Nano models from OpenAI uh, that are speed optimized, but even though yeah. they are speed optimized, we're still able to be five to 10 X faster because the diffusion model is so much more parallel, so much more efficient. You feel like, uh, like it brings an extra level of accuracy by the approach it takes? Yeah, that's an interesting question. That's another uh, idea. Uh, that's another benefit of a diffusion model. Mm -hmm. like if we think about an autoregressive model, once it outputs something, it can never take it back, but there okay. is quite a correction. Like you cannot scratch something and I take it back, right? A diffusion model is actually trained to correct mistakes and during inference, when it generates an answer, it keeps refining, it keeps fixing mistakes until, yeah. until you know, it outputs something to the user. Um, the model is still not perfect, okay. uh, so it still makes mistakes, unfortunately, yeah. uh, but we are pretty optimistic that this kind of uh, error correction that is built in into the process is going to allow us to uh, achieve higher accuracy okay. compared to, uh, to autoregressive models. And that's kind of like what we're seeing at the scale of models we can able to train, uh, which is we're matching the quality while being significantly faster. Now, with, with a diffusion model, 
does scaling have the same impact that it does scaling of, of computers of course, yeah. uh, and power have the same effect that it does on a traditional LLM? So the scalings are different, and that's why we're so excited about, uh, about this different technology because it's a completely different way of training the models. Uh, and what we're seeing is that diffusion language models uh, are more data efficient. Okay. Uh, because you're not just training it to predict the max token, but you're actually training it to, to fix mistakes. Yes. Uh, they can get more out of the same amount of text, out of the same amount of training data, the model learns more. Uh, okay. So what we're seeing is that the scaling laws are indeed different. Uh, and so that's why we're so excited about what's going to happen as we keep developing the models, they throw more compute yeah. data, train uh, larger neural networks. Like yeah. Google. And they generally work more efficiently, right? Yes. So that's the key. The key benefit is really an inference. So the key bottom, like eventually, it's all going to be an inference, uh, an inference game, an inference play. Yeah. People are building massive data centers because they're going to have to serve these models to a lot of people, yeah. support a lot of different use cases. And there is this estimate, you know, we might need a thousand apps more kind of, <laughs> kind of compute or, yeah. or our ability to serve a thousand X more tokens than what we do today. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe the hardware will get you to 10 X more, uh -huh. but then there is still a need for some kind of like improvement at the software level yeah. to be able to serve more tokens. And a diffusion language model is infinitely more efficient because each neural network evaluation in an autoregressive model outputs a single token, okay. which is the next one. In a diffusion language model, each neural network evaluation is able to output or modify many tokens. So for yeah. the same cost, you get more things out. I said, yeah. That's why our models are so much more efficient compared to what's out there. Is it kind of like, like to really simplify this, like say, say you wanted to gather all of your quarters and you take just a fistful of change and you throw it down and then the first thing it's doing is throwing out the knickers. Then it's going through the pennies. Then it's ten, and working down to what is ideally your... Yeah, so the, the key difference is that essentially that the network is able to process many tokens and many words at the same time for the same cost. And so, which is what GPUs are designed for. GPUs are designed to process many things, do the same operation over and over yeah. across many data points. So that's the key benefit. It's like inherently more parallel. Yeah, that's why it's what we believe will eventually win in the end. So ideally, you'd be able to get more out of the same GPU. Yes, absolutely. So we can either be faster than autoregressive models for the same cost, or uh, for, for the same speed, uh, we can actually be 5 to 10x cheaper compared okay. to autoregressive models. So we can all get both, that we're basically Pareto dominating autoregressive models yeah. in terms of like throughput versus latency, which is basically cost versus speed. Yeah. Pareto dominates. So for any kind of speed, we can get a better cost. For any cost, we can get a better speed. Yeah. So that's why we're so excited about this fundamentally different approach because it scales matter at yeah. different time, which is the thing that actually matters. That's awesome. Is there a, a reinforcement learning element to this, I assume, if it's, if it's consistently going through and checking its own work? Yes. So where we've actually built, and so there is different ways of training these models. So there's pre-training stages, there is mid-training, there is post-training. We can also be reinforcement learning on okay. a diffusion language model. So we've actually developed uh, the whole infrastructure to do, uh, to do reinforcement learning uh, on a diffusion language model. Okay. Where, especially in, in the coding world, what we're seeing is that uh, doing reinforcement learning where people to not only improve the quality of the answers, which is what you would normally get even if you were to use uh, an autoregressive model, uh -huh. but we can also train the diffusion model to converge faster. So we can train it to take fewer steps to get to the right answer, oh, wow. which is further improving yeah. the, the, the speed of, of our mollies. So yeah. it's a completely different paradigm that allows us to develop new ways of training it, adapt existing techniques in different ways. Yeah. So that's why we're so excited because it's, it's, uh, it's all very new. I think we're still very far from a, from a local optimum. Yeah. There's so many choices that are still to be, that can be improved. So that's why we think there is so much potential around, around this thing. Out. That's amazing. Well, let's talk business a little bit. I uh, I know, I think in the last month, I believe, you all closed a $50 million seed round, right? That's right, yes. We closed a $50 million seed round with uh, uh, some top investors, including early packers of OpenAI, Anthropic, uh, strategics uh, like Microsoft, NVIDIA, Databricks, Snowflake. So we have angels like Andrew Manopathy, Andrew N., 
uh, Matt Friedman, and whatever, a really amazing group of supporters that believe that this is going to be the future of language models. And we're really excited to to build out this technology with, with their help. That's amazing. And uh, Mercury 3 just dropped, correct? correct. Or very recent. Yes. So uh, uh, in the last few weeks, uh, we, we announced uh, an improved version of our new Mercury model uh, that is uh, significantly better at following instruction, at coding, uh, while maintaining uh, the, the trademark, the, the speed that, that, that we're known for. Yeah. Oh, wow. What's uh, How do you feel about the pace of improvement of your models over time? Are you feeling good about where things are headed? I'm very, very optimistic. I'm very bullish about, about this technology. Like if you think about Inception, we're basically a year old. Yeah. We already have a model that is competitive, like comparable in quality with some of the best uh, uh, speed optimizers. There are legacy tech like companies that don't have that. Exactly. You know, <laughs> that's a like, statement. Our models are comparable to Gemini Flash, to mini models from urban AI, the, yeah. you know, the, the Haiku models from Anthropic, if you look at the bench models. Yeah. So, you know, we did all of that in like less than a year with a small team. So imagine what we can do, you know, with a little bit more time, more resources now with this new funding that, yeah. that we have in the bank. We're very excited about the next steps. That's amazing. What is, uh, if someone wants to go and try Mercury, what's the, what's the best way to go do that? Yeah. So Mercury models are available through our API platform. So if you go to api.apoc at uh, inceptionlabs.ai, uh, you can access uh, our model. It's all OpenAI compatible. So no. whatever app you're bending on traditional autoregressive models, you can also replace them using a Mercury official language model. Uh, and what you're going to get is significantly higher speed and reduced costs. So if, especially from building an app that is somehow latency sensitive, maybe you're building a voice agent or a customer support agent or a coding ID where you need to be able to give code suggestions very quickly to your users. Or time is vital. Where time is vital or, you know, you need to iterate very quickly. Yeah. Uh, diffusion language models are a, are a great uh, alternative. As they are the best solution available out there for a number of different use cases. And yeah, they're... Uh, publicly available to our platform and they're very easy to use. You just need to get an API key and then everything is backwards compatible in, a, in an open AI compatible way. So it's all very easy to, to, to try them out. You also have a chat. So if you wanted to go to chat for the Inception Labs.ai, you can actually find there's a little program where you can chat with the model and see how fast and, and accurate it is. Um, we're also on uh, Bedrock. So mm -hmm. uh, we found our case closely with, uh, with the AWS. So you can actually deploy a uh, Mercury model on your own VQC by provisioning your GQs uh, if you have concern about privacy. Um, so there is a number of different ways to reduce our models and then carry it out to decide and all. Excellent. Stefano, thank you so much. I was so excited about this call today and being able to chat. Uh, I love the work you guys are doing and can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.